I'm Just Saying is sponsored by Zone Delivery USA. Fresh, healthy meals delivered to your door. For more information, go to ZoneDeliveryUSA.com. And by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook by going to AudiblePodcast.com slash GFQ. Hey everyone, welcome to I'm Just Saying Week 47. 47. <laughs> I'm Andrew Zarian, joined by the man with the hat, Lon Blaze. I, I do have a hat. You do have a hat, yeah. Because it's damn cold. It's from Colombia. It's damn cold. Yeah, it is damn cold. You're both in black. Look at this. You both match. We You're do gonna start doing all, some like we do this all the time. I'm gonna walk against avant garde poetry. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We're gonna do sprockets. Yes. <laughs> sprockets Welcome to the program. Hi, I'm Joanna Blaze. I think everybody knows. I don't, do we need to do introductions anymore? I don't think we do, right? Well, what if people are tuning in for the first time? No, yeah, nobody's tuning in. Because they don't want to know Nobody, which, <laughs> which one of us is which. <laughs> nobody's tuning in. Nobody's tuning in for the first time. I want to remind all our viewers to go to our website and subscribe to us. We're on iTunes. We're on the Zoom. Uh, we're all over the place. If you go to guysfromqueens.com, you can catch all our archive shows. If you miss a live show, and we're also broadcasting 24-7. Uh, if you go to gfqlive.tv, that's gfqlive.tv. That's our live streaming page. So we give you an option to watch either on Stickham, Justin TV, or on Ustream. We also have a very interactive chat room here. Uh, actually, a bunch of people are tuning in right now in the chat room. Hi. Uh, a lot of people, actually. Right oh, now. look at all this. Yeah, a lot of people. So it's great. Um, come close. in, talk to us, chat with us. Tell it's us damn cold and everybody's Tell inside. us why you hate us, because apparently <laughs> we're apparently hated. We're apparently, hated. we are hated by the entire United Kingdom. Oh. Yes. I'm very proud of this. I wanted to get a country to hate me. I was thinking it might be, I don't know, something useless. Togo. Like like Uzbekistan. <laughs> like I thought it would be a useless country. But obviously the United Kingdom dislikes me. Oh. Well you screwed no, up. No, it's actually I both love of that you. you screwed up our show. I yeah. know. Yeah, you screwed up our show. And you I say you don't like British humor <laughs> and we're hated. Yeah. These these idiots don't know bullocks. That, that was one of them. Bollocks. I don't know. I don't know. They speak Bollocks. funny. <laughs> they talk funny. The Queen's funny. English. Yes, they don't I talk. was an English teacher. I love English. They don't talk good. They don't, don't talk, talk English good. good. Yeah. I'm like, what are the what do you what do you say? Well, okay, here here's what happened, okay? <laughs> they got mad. Yeah. And Joanne, you gotta Twist bring, the knife in. You gotta bring Ma- it closer. Make it worse. Yeah, I'll I'll bring it. Lon, go go to you. I'm yeah, closer. fine. Andrew's gonna closer. go and explain what's uh what's been going wrong. And how and how he's going to make it better, which will of course only make it worse. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not really my fault. I said Ricky Gervais <laughs> is not funny. And no, I didn't even say Ricky Gervais isn't funny. You know what? Somebody find that clip and and put it together. Really? Because I I don't remember saying he wasn't funny. All I said was he wasn't funny on the Golden Globes. Right. Yeah, and uh, I had even and, said that he ripped it up the year before. Yeah. Yes. So you you defended it. And then I made a joke saying that British people aren't funny. And then I said, I like Monty Python. That's the only thing I found funny. And then the drag queen, whatever. It, it, Eddie, Eddie Lizard. Eddie Who's not Eddie British? No, no. Oh. Eddie Lizard. Eddie, Eddie Lizard. Eddie Izzard. Not Eddie Izzard. Izzard. <laughs> I don't know. See, there, that, that's, I don't know. That's... <laughs> I just hear you've things. You've just defended the country again. The country, but I know. Right, <laughs> right. We have to do a good show, and you were purposely screwing it up. I'm totally so, offended thanks. the United Kingdom. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I don't know my British comedians. I, I, I said I don't find it funny because most of the time I don't get the references. And that's fine. I'm not saying it's not funny. I'm just saying I don't find it funny because I don't get the references. And they, often they don't find American humor funny. So I don't understand why they're so offended. It's yeah, so if offended. I were British, I would think, you know, based on Larry the Cable Guy and and a, and a group of those. Listen, oh, great. I'm going to offend blue collar humor now. Oh, my God. That's the worst <laughs> type. Oh, oh here Larry we go. Larry the Cable Guy. I'll never be able to go to a oh truck stop Red, again. Redneck humor. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Listen, I have nothing against England. I just think you take your comedy a little too serious <laughs> to be offended by moi. I don't think I've... Ever, I, I didn't even say anything bad. But here was the point this guy was making. In the end, I got him to turn around because I rallied against this guy. I went back and forth. I was fighting with them. <laughs> and then we said something about... Just the, like the Revolutionary War, which, by the way, yeah. we won too. <laughs> so sorry. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> So I said, uh, first I said, love the, the British Yanks. Office, with them in the war. The, the U.S. <laughs> I find the American office a lot funnier than, than the British office. I don't hey, like either Because one of them, I don't so. understand a word they're saying in the British <laughs> office. So fine. Now I find it funny because I understand them. Two, I said, I didn't find them funny. I, I said, Ricky Gervais wasn't funny because nobody was laughing. If, if it was funny, people would have laughed. Right. 
Then this guy goes, what do you use for sadness? A saddle meter? Do you want a laugh track to tell you when to laugh? I'm like, no. I don't think a laugh track is required to find something humorous. How do you measure comedy if you don't measure it by, 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 by laughing? How do you measure your comedy? If you don't find something by laughing, right? Uh, that usually, if you laugh, you personal. chuckle, if you find it funny... Then it's funny. If you don't find it funny, it's not funny. So, like, I'm trying to explain to this person, right, like, to you, you can find it funny. You know, I you. don't find it funny. Exactly. It's a matter of personal. I lost taste. my mind. I lost my mind. <laughs> it's the units. I lost of, my mind. It's the units of funniness. Our humor is 37 percent funny. Oh my god, I lost my. Mind. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go at war with with other countries now. So sick. Hey, did you know that we're on in competition with Barbara Walters? We She's are. on Serious Barbara. Radio. She does a Serious Radio show. I didn't know that. Uh, every yeah, every Monday, Monday night. Yeah, nobody's listening. I think they. I think they are. I think blah, blah. maybe, maybe yeah. they are. <laughs> People driving their cars. They can't get their internet in the cars yet. We should call, get audio. Call me crazy, but I the think car. there are a few people kind of know who she is as opposed to Oh, us. nobody who <laughs> listens to her. She's not relevant anymore. Of course she is. You think Barbara Walters has is relevant? Absolutely. Listen, she can get an interview and we can't. Absolutely. I thought, I thought what is it, Pierce Morgan's. Uh, did you watch the show? It premiered? No. I thought it was pretty good. I saw some clips I never of it, watched so. Larry King particularly. So it had, It's nothing. It, Howard was on, so I watched it. Yeah. And Oprah was on it, and I watched it. Yeah. I like Larry King. I don't know why. I always did. He he just got nutty towards well, the end. Well, he was like an old carpet, yeah. well, you know. It's like you don't want to replace it because yeah. it's just too big an effort. But so like Larry King would say something crazy, like um, like they're talking about I don't know. Uh, give me give me something. The earthquake in 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 Haiti. Okay. So they're talking about the earthquake in Haiti, and he'll go, he'll say, uh, you know, the earthquake was really bad. Millions of lives might be lost. Who knows? And he goes. Next week on Larry King. Like, he just cuts it. And then he goes, Margaret, in Man- Massapeak- Margaret from Massapequa was on the line. Like, w- you just cut this guy off in the middle of, like, he'll plug. Like, yeah, in the most ridiculous moments. Like, this guy is tearing, opening up his heart. He's crying. And he'll go, next week on the show, we have Phil Donahue. Like, <laughs> That's not even so bad. Like, yeah. sometimes he'll cut to someone really ridiculous, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, next week on the show, He's we excellent. have... Um, I don't you know. know, Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Regis, uh, is Regis re- is retired. I think they pushed him out. Oh, he didn't say he's retiring. He said he's moving on to different things. Well, he also hired, um, fired his manager. Did you hear that? Mm-mm. No, he fired his manager. They, and like uh, two days beforehand. Either. I think really? the, I I forgot which yeah. one of the papers. It might have been the Post. They were reporting that they expect him to take a huge pay cut, but Kelly got a pay bump. Weird, right? Well, you know my feeling is that what they'll do is the station. Sh- you mean ABC was attempting to give him a pay cut? Yeah. Is it an ABC show? or Is it syndicated on ABC? Uh, I guess no, it's on. I no, it's ABC because it's, it's on ABC, ABC everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is ABC. Um, I think w- some small towns they syndicated on like other things. Right, but right. Um, but it's a network show. It is. Yeah. I think that he. I mean, he look, he is 79, 79. (laughs) God love him. And he has cut back a great deal on his. He takes more and more vacation. Yes. On his appearances on the show. I I bet you they'll circulate. They'll circulate for a year. You know, I I think I think they should rotate. I I know who's going to get it. Who? I have a gut feeling. Who? Mark and Swallows. The well, husband. He's one of the people. Yeah. Uh, They'll give it to him. In the, in Mark the Consuelos. Because I, the other people that they've considered, I think, are too busy to uh, do. Anderson Cooper. Yeah, that Anderson was the, Cooper. That Which would be great. He, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Yep. Yeah, but they won't put him on. I don't Cause know. Because he's gay. I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't know what? We're at the crux that that doesn't mean anything. But you know why? Like, Who watches very, Regis? Yeah, but he's Middle been, America. He's very, very popular. He's very popular. I hope. Popular. I mean, I love him. And he's young. I think they'll rotate for like a year. I mean, how long did it take yeah. him to? Yeah. How be, long did they go from? Oh God! From Kathy it took Lee to, forever. It was yeah. like a year, right? Yeah. 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 They'll, they'll, they'll. But they'll, it was, it was interesting. The and this is not even on our on our script for today. But you're the, you're like the only people that actually know about this. Uh, everybody else is a buffoon that I work with. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. No offense, Kunal Jess. You know what I love? You know, what I love? if I come in on Thursday, he'll go. You know, everyone else I work with is a buffoon. Yeah. <laughs> You've just insulted your wife. That was that. No, was just knows, but like, 
you guys know a lot about the history. They're all young. I'm like an 80 year old man inside. So that is true. Look at me wearing my sweater. That's why we got. I'm a little <laughs> cold. Your- I'm a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> they. Kelly get- was a perfect fit, though. Yes. If you look at it, yes, Kelly, and it was, was surprising because yes, Kathy she- Lee wasn't the first one. It was Regis and his wife at first. No. No. Didn't no, they no, have no. a show together? No. No. Or she would do guest she, spots. She guest guest spots. Yes. She always did guest spots okay. with him. She would fill in. But it was always Kel- it was, uh, it Kathy It was always Lee. Kathy, Kathy Lee. Lee, yeah. And she wasn't, but she wasn't liked towards the end. Towards the end. She was not liked. Towards the end. But at the beginning. She was liked. They, oh, yeah. They were extremely popular. Yeah. Extremely One of my favorite things popular. ever said about them. Do you remember the magazine that they were doing the in in and outs of the year? They were so they far were, out they're in. Yeah. <laughs> they were so far <laughs> out that they were in. I like yeah. that. No, I, they were extremely popular. Yeah. At first, very I, very much. I remember when they were when Frank and her were having the problems, and he would she would talk about Frank like there was no problem. Yeah, I think constantly. that's kind of when I'm like, your marriage is so little. sour. Frank is going and asking for for anal sex from from a stewardess. Like, wait a minute, I never heard about the anal sex. It was one of the allegations. Oh. And then he wrote like a song. Do you remember? She came. I thought and it she was an sang. alleged stewardess. It was an alleged <laughs> stewardess. The anal sex was not alleged, but the stewardess was. <laughs> Do you remember the song? Like you broke my heart, and like no. she had this whole thing. She sung in front of him, and no. like poor Frank is like probably mortified. Oh my! No, I don't remember. Oh, that yeah, you at know all. there are some there are some husbands that just can't back out because yeah. their wives are so famous. Oh my God. The other one that's like that, Judge Judy. Judge yeah. Judy's husband. Oh my like, God. tried to bail out. And then, like, he had nothing in his life, so he went back. Can you imagine coming back with your hat in your hand to, to judge, judge Judy? Judy. Yeah, that's oh, be man. Rough. I that's want to continue this, rough. but we need to thank a sponsor first. Uh, as we do each and every week, our, our new sponsor actually just joined the network about a month ago. Zone Delivery USA. Love. The simplest, most convenient, dependable way to get in They're delivering in, in the shape snow? Every day. Unbelievable. Every day. Snowstorm, doesn't matter. They're here in the... And actually what they did, uh, they tell you there's like a window of time that they'll deliver. When there's a snowstorm, they start really early to make sure everybody gets it. Really? It's amazing how dependable these That's, guys are. That, that is amazing. I'm down 13 and a half pounds. I just weighed myself right before the show. Wow. In about a month. 24 days. I started January 1st. I, my st- you know what's funny? I was looking in the mirror. My stomach is nearly gone. Really? Yeah. It's, it's almost flat. Wow. And it's weird. Like I'm looking, I'm like, wow, this is weird that I've lost so much weight and I'm still eating. Mm-hmm. I'm having three meals, two snacks a day mm-hmm. uh, and like a pr- and like a power bar, you mm-hmm. know, they, they give you. OK. And it's not, you know, there are other companies that do this, but you're getting frozen cardboard flavored meals right. and they send you like a month supply. No, this, this isn't is like fresh that. food every right. day. Fre- yeah. Totally fresh. They delivered last night. The guy came like two o'clock in the morning and delivered it. Oh, my God. And uh and you're talking from everything from meatballs to steak uh, to salmon, uh, scallops. And they will accommodate if you have food issues. Absolutely. A- allergies food allergies. Or if you're vegetarian. Uh, like, I don't eat mushrooms. Mm-hmm. No mushrooms. Just as like carrots, no carrots. They, they cuss, okay. you know, depending on what you need, they'll fix the menu for you. Gluten allergies, uh, they have meals designed for diabetics. Right. What, regardless of losing the weight, I have to say, I have so much energy. I'm bouncing off the walls because you're eating healthy food. You're not yeah. eating crap. Yeah, because That's they why. because they go by the zone where it's uh you know it's a balanced meal. You're getting mm-hmm. and you're still eating. I have the breakfast. I, I'm never hungry, so I have so much energy because this is designed to you know give you energy so you don't crash every right. day. I was crashing at two thirty right. to the point I had to go lay down. I would sit here and I felt like like a drug addict because I was going like this because I was so tired. I was zoning in and out. Yeah. But now I'm in the zone. You're in the zone. I'm in the zone with Zone Delivery. Uh, go to zonedeliveryusa.com now. Get started. Change your life. They are, uh, I mean, and, I, and I've, I, we just signed a new sponsor. I mean, I don't want to take away from this. But I was selling the sponsor. I won't take on a company unless I believe in them. We get approached, not all the time, a, a mm-hmm. quarterly by a new company. Every mm-hmm. quarter we get approached by one or two companies. I deny most of them. And you guys know. You mm-hmm. guys have been here with me. I'm, I'm insane with this stuff because I want to have a company that I will use mm-hmm. and I'll believe in. Mm-hmm. And Zone is definitely that. Uh, they're amazing. Um, this Thursday, I'm announcing a contest uh, where we're going to give away one week of Zone oh, cool. to a lucky viewer. 
Ooh. Which Very is great. Cool. Get started. You know, this might be the boost that you need. That's right. Might be. It's hard to actually say to yourself, you know what? Let's go. Let me do this. Let me change my eating habits. It's extremely but hard. You know what? If you just, if somebody does it for you, yes. you'll definitely stick to of it. Of course. It's, it's, it's way more helpful. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Zone. Zone Deliver USA. Very cool. Dot com. Well, it's hard to lose weight in the snow. It really is. Have you been going out at all? Do I go out when it's nice? No. Yeah, that's true. Well, so my tire, in, I have no car. Oh. My tire is dead. My tire is totally flat. I have no brakes. My brakes are gone. Oh. Uh, so I have to get a new tire. So I, I'm ordering them now. Ah. So uh, I haven't left. Have I you watched? Have you watched the stuff like from the other parts of the country? Well, I mean the, that cold air reached here. I mean there were places upstate that were 20 degrees below zero. Boston was 14 degrees below zero last night. Boston. That's kind of wild. But I want to know. You, mm-hmm. th- it's always announced every time they want to d- display how cold it is in this country. They go to International Falls, Minnesota. Do they really? It was, I don't know and that. it was 46 degrees below zero the night before last. Oh my in God. International Falls. Why does and I want to know. Live there? Yeah. Why? Why, why do you we, live there? Yeah. Why do you? Why do if, the, if we have any listeners in International Falls, would you please tell us? Do you have why any you stay listeners there? near International Falls? Yeah. Yes. Why do you stay there? We would just like to know. I don't know because Regis isn't there. <laughs> did you did you see the guy whose car was encased in ice? No, where was oh, this? Was, was he here? He was, he was watching the football game yesterday, and you see, God he was punished him. The first problem, <laughs> and he parked. He God parked, punished him he for watching the football game. I watched was, the game, and there was a water main break. Uh huh. Okay. Oh my God! There was right a water there. main break, Wait, and it didn't it didn't flood his car. It there was a puddle of water by his car, and cars just kept going down the street and splashing his car. Oh and it would splash and freeze and splash and freeze. So the guy woke up and there was literally a, a four or five inch thick coating of ice oh around his entire car. So he chips away at the door and he chips away after you know hours at the tailpipe. He gets in the car, he starts the car up and he starts running the heat, right? St- figuring that you know he'll work away. <laughs> the outside air, the outside temperature and the inside temperature mismatched. His bla- his back window blew out. Oh my god, <laughs> poor guy. Oh man, I, I I haven't left. I painted on Saturday. I painted the ceiling in the kitchen. Really? That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I saw you mention that on the painting show. Why was it really bad? Yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it just it bothered me. It looked a little dirty, and I tried <laughs> to clean it, and it wouldn't and wouldn't clean. So I I painted the entire thing. We actually went to a party upstate on Saturday night. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Out there in the was it any good? There were deer running out in the there street. in the boonies. Where, where upstate? Uh, Warwick, Warwick, I Monroe. Have no, I have no idea. Where it's that. Oh, uh, the boonies. It, yeah. it was a collection of odd hippie type people. It was very nice though. Oh yeah, they were cool. Everyone weird actually, we people. had a lot of fun because we went up with two of my friends from my acting class, and of course we got lost when we got up there because the GPS gave us the incorrect directions. Oh my god! So it just it just gave me a street. It was like I plugged in one street, and it gave us the wrong street. And it, you know, there's one st- it, it, a, a similar name, but it said no, no. This is the street you want. I'm like, yeah. no, I want this one. So and it just kept negating dr- what I typed in. Drove around in 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 the dark for a while. Um, and then coming home, we got lost and we stopped at the Jeez. police station in a little town called Monroe. Oh, and yeah, great. Now the, Monroe- Brian, Brian now the Monrovians, Monrovians will hate yes, us. Yes, now the Monrovians will hate us. And whoever my husband asked for directions gave us the totally incorrect directions. We ended up going in, in the opposite direction. You ended up in Idaho. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. We ended up in International Falls, Minnesota. Pretty yeah. much. But um, actually, no, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But I'd like to, for one minute, if I could, yes. bring up something um, a, that's a serious topic. Sure, I'll turn off my mic. Okay. <laughs> Don't you dare. Um, in reference to the football game and the Super Bowl, anyone who's listened to this show knows how I feel about football, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate male so if any of you like british humor and football you're screwed yeah you're really screwed (laughs) um but even if you persist in wanting to watch the game and enjoy this display of male aggression and violence and sexism um the super bowl which is going to be in dallas the dallas police estimate that there will be thousands upon thousands of young very young girls approximately average age 12 or 13 who have been trafficked and will be forced 
into prostitution to service the needs of many of the influx of uh, men who will be coming to see the Super Bowl. Really? Yes. Um. Is this is that the, a common the, thing the, with the with the hosting ta- cities for for yes. the Super Bowl, yes. or is this and, like and a? It, no, and it's particularly bad because of where it is because it's because Dallas. It's, yeah. it's Dallas, it's and it's near, near Mexico, the Mexican or, border. Uh huh. But people the, think that only foreign girls are trafficked, and that's not true. Girls are being trafficked right in our own towns and cities. A lot of girls are kidnapped, or they are lured on the internet. Um, away from their families um, or their runaways and they are basically drugged, gang raped and made into drug addicts and forced to live a life of prostitution. Not Um, for this one occasion. Not for this one occasion. But um, the average life expectancy of a girl after she's trafficked is about another seven years. Okay? There is an organization that an advocacy organization that has tried to approach the Super Bowl organization basically to say it's not that football per se creates this problem, but at least put the word out there that this is going on, alert people to what is happening in their cities, and the Super Bowl organization has refused to do so. There is an org- the Dallas police know this. The, the Dallas, Dallas police, police know. And um, there's an organization called, it's www.change.org. And it's an advocacy organization. There is a petition that you can sign pretty much just by clicking. And it goes to the Super Bowl organization asking them to at least bring awareness to this issue to people. Um, it's the least that we can do. Okay, that's www.change.org. That's change.org. Yes. There was actually, it's funny, last night I was watching a special on CNBC, Mm -hmm. and it was about the trafficking that happens in this country. Yes. And they were were interviewing, uh, they were talking about prostitution, how, Mm -hmm. you know, with the internet, it's become, uh, I mean, insane, and how... These pimps are, are prostituting yeah. these underage girls, 12, 13 years old yeah. online because they come from broken, broken families, broken right. homes, and they, they need a father figure. So at first they take them out, they oh, buy yeah. them things, they treat them like gold, they treat them like gold, and then they start selling them. Right. But there's a major problem where if these girls are caught, mm-hmm. there's no, even though it, they're underage, they're, they're 13 years old and... Uh, you know, the pimp is forcing them and they're yes. doing it because they're they're scared. They go to a correctional facility. That's right. Because there is no other place to put them. Because That's if they right. release them, then they go. It's the danger that they might get killed by the pimp. Yes. Because they, you know, they're young. So now they're holding these girls in jail. Right. Because there's no place to put them. And there was this judge that we're interviewing and he said, it breaks my heart. But. And the reason why he does this is to this keep judge, them safe. He doesn't keep them out. safer in jail yeah. than they are and he has a case file in, on his desk but for every for you know every day and it's about a girl that he let go that got killed by the pimp so he doesn't oh, do God. it anymore so he's building this like it's in Vegas actually this like uh, mansion for mm-hmm. these girls to go yeah for to rehabilitate them there and to are... take care of them because the families most of the time are broken up families there yep. was this one girl her mother's a teacher a teacher the daughter ended up becoming a prostitute with a pimp and the girl's in jail, and the and he, she can't take care of the daughter. She can't take care of her kid, and she's a very you know educated woman, and she seems like she has a good head on her shoulders. And they interviewed her, but she said she has no control over her kid, yeah. and she can't guarantee the kid is isn't going to run away. So she'd rather have the kid in jail. Yeah, um, unfortunately, there really are no like halfway houses for them in most places, and that's really what's needed at there this are, point. There is one in New York. Um, but it's it's small and it uh, it can't possibly accommodate all the girls that are needed to ha- be accommodated. So yeah, it's a huge problem, and they're they're young young girls. These are not women who are making you know a choice. Th- these are not women at the bunny ranch who are yeah. choosing that yeah. this is their the way they. And they actually make their interviewed uh, the guy from the what's his name uh, the bunny ranch Dennis Dennis Hop yeah. 
from the Bunny Ranch, mm-hmm. and they were interviewing him. And these girls love being there because they're making oh, they six make figures. A they're making and they work for only three months. Yeah, yeah. They work three months. They're making you know a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, and yeah. then they go home. And they are, and it's legal there. Yeah. So they are. Um, Re- they have. To be tested they, they, they're tested yeah. periodically. Every month. Every month, and also there are cameras in all of Panic the rooms. Panic buttons. Panic buttons. I mean. The girls are safe. They're not. um, They don't have to worry about being attacked or beaten or abused. They get to control what it is they choose to do. And and I, I truly have no problem with an adult woman making a choice, a conscious choice that that's what she wants to do. I think it's her body. It's her business. And I think prostitution should be legal, frankly. And I think a lot of these abuses would stop. Yeah. But these are not adult women making a conscious choice but how do you how do you control something like prostitution you know that's that's where the problem lies how do you how can you control it how well, can you I think well it, you know there's always going to be an under market for everything you right. know, there's going to be a black market for you know there are people that buy tax-free cigarettes and liquor all the time but you know at a certain point it becomes so inconvenient for to get the illegal stuff that the legal stuff is better you know, you can buy illegal alcohol, but you know you're you're risking thing when you can buy just well, buy it's like in Amsterdam. Yeah, where you know pot is legal and prostitution is legal. Not that there aren't abuses in Amsterdam because there are. There are, you know, underage still prostitutes and and um people who are girls and 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 young boys who are trafficked there, but. There is a lot more policing of what goes on, and the there is such a great deal of legal prostitution that the problem is not as prevalent as it is here. Yeah, you know, it's scary, huh? It's very scary. I mean, it's very scary, and it's very sad. It's it it, it was interesting. So the girl, the the reporter, was trying to see how easy it was, and she put an ad on Craigslist. And said she was underage and put an underage picture and mm-hmm. men were just calling her yeah. nonstop. Yeah. And that that's all you need to do. That I is mean, all that's, you need to do. Yeah. It's and, simple. And, and you take some some kid who doesn't feel wanted and all of a sudden a bunch of people want them. Right. They're such an easy mark. It's insane. Totally. Totally. So yeah. that's that's my serious statement for the moment. Yeah. Well, and she's busy, too. When all this. You know, she takes her test this week. Yes. Are you I doing take it? my test Saturday. Saturday, yes, I've been studying. My brain hurts. I just spent like I've been her Pilates guinea pig. Yeah, he has been. I've been I just spent like three hours at Barnes and Noble studying. So, so she knows all her, all her moves. I don't know. I can't. I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> I thought you had all this <laughs> energy. Yeah, exactly. I know, but I'm in pain. Everywhere <laughs> hurts, and I'm in pain too. Not as much as me. <laughs> Not no one's pain is like no yours. One's no pain one's pain is, is like that me. Is yours. Yeah. <laughs> no. Why you, you shouldn't be in so much pain? I was my not back. Pain my when back I was is your broken. Age. I have a broken back. You need to take care of it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah you're not. And uh, um, on my end, uh, La Junta, Colorado, is gone forward, and uh, we have officially June 18th is my ride in La Junta. It's my first century of the of the year. And uh, they're really all, they're all, doing they're already. so into it. They are so into. It. Yeah, I was thinking of doing them in the fall and they wanted to. They said, these are the dates we have. And I said, listen, if you think you can put it together at an earlier date. Great. So they're out. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video soon about my pitch to, to every state so that a town comes out and volunteers. How many how many do you think you're going to be able to do? I want to do 10. I'm going to make that the goal. You know, I'm going to make it the goal to do 10. I think Massachusetts will actually happen. New York I could do here. That's pretty easy. And uh, and Colorado. I'd like to do a state near Colorado because it would make sense, you know, to do, yeah. do a state near Colorado if I'm going to be out there. But um, the people that are interested in Arizona are like in Scottsdale. So if I did it a, a week later, I can't do it a week earlier. If I did it a week later, it would be the third week in June in Scottsdale, Arizona. I would evaporate. You know, it'd just be too hot. You know, I'm yeah, probably not. I am a not a professional biker. Good idea. I'm just a guy who rides a bicycle to raise money. That's <laughs> the, so. So I would really because be I'm a professional biker, but I don't raise raise any money. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So, so if anyone is in around La Junta, Colorado, wants to come in and ride with me, so bring a bike and a hundred dollars, and you get to ride with us. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. 
Or bring a hundred dollars and you don't have to ride. You yeah, I mean, there's either. really no, you know, I bring a hundred dollars and make someone else ride. You know, that works too. Uh, there's really, really high. I mean, the the riding is the privilege and the honor. Uh, and I'm going to be doing my uh, AIDS ride this year. I am not going to do San Francisco to LA this year. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do this from I'm, here to where. I'm, no, I'm going to, I'm just going to like, I'm going to go down to the cross Island and for days, I'm just going to be going back and forth. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And I, people can come down and throw money at me because we're, that's, um, that's a great idea. We're actually going to be, yeah. Away. GFQ should sponsor me. Yeah. We should do we something. We should get the banner, get the yeah. car out, you know, we'll do have something. people yeah, down at should. Fort Totten, you know, w- when are you doing it? Uh, Over the, the summer, probably a week in May. Okay. Cause we'll I have something. to, I have to, I'm going to, we're going to be away in Europe at the end of May, very beginning of June, and I'm only going to have like 10 days at home before I have to be out in Colorado to ride that. So I'll have to have done some training anyway. So if I have 545 miles under my belt, that'd be cool. Excellent. Good so, for you. Yeah. We talked to some people. So we um, we saw a couple of movies. Yeah, we've seen... Okay. We saw two movies at home that are already on video. Yeah. And we saw one at the movies. Okay, I wanted to ask you guys a question about a movie, okay? Okay. okay. And you would know. Apocalypse Now... Which uh-huh. is a brilliant movie, uh-huh. great movie, right? Mm-hmm. Are you f- you're you're a fan of it? Would I you, don't know would if you I'm give f- it all the credit that that it was given over the years? I'm not sure if I would. I okay. th- I think given when it was made, there were things about it that were innovative. Yeah, you know. All right, that, for the time, I thought it was yeah. unbelievable yeah. how they did it. Um, I watched. Now they re- re-released it in 2001, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like Apocalypse Now, like Redux. Redux. Redo. What what was remade about it? I I couldn't, and I watched the I, remake. This is the first time I saw the remake. Oh, truthfully, I don't know. It, and it's not. I thought first of all when I saw it, I thought it was like a like a B film that mm-hmm. did like a second version because I couldn't tell. Like it was like a scene where I was like, is this like the movie? Because but it says two thousand and one. It doesn't make sense. So apparently they remade the movie. Yeah, I think he re-edited it. Yes, okay. he did re-edit it. Parts okay. of it. Okay, I don't remember hearing about it though. Like, I don't remember a re-release. I do. I think he did it in a minor thing. I yeah. don't think he did it in major cities. I don't think he did a great deal with it. Yeah, I think it was one of the. Also, it's one of those things. The best that thing that I ever heard said about Apocalypse Now was because remember the Deer Hunter came out at the same time. Both movies yeah. about Vietnam. Yeah. Is that the Deer Hunter was what Vietnam looked like? Yeah. Apocalypse Now is what it felt like. That was that was. I the mean, way it was. First of all, Brando. I mean, he <laughs> this was this was bloated Brando. But I mean, oh, yeah. he was just. If you watch Brando like p- after Apocalypse Now, mm-hmm. no, no. I mean, in The Godfather, he was still a parody of himself, right? No, he wasn't that because everyone it became was, no, parody became afterwards. Parody. It became the parody. Yeah, yeah. but he. T- He's not, but after that, it seems like everything that Brando did was kind of that Brando character. Oh yeah, this was so different. You know, the, like his character was was different in this. Well, because he used to actually be an actor. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, although I, I have to tell you, I really am not a huge Brando fan. <laughs> oh, What's no. scary is what a good-looking man he was. Oh, he was very handsome. I yes. mean, and yes. then he and then he just handsome. he was very handsome. Um, but I think one of the reasons that he became such a phenomenon is because it was the beginning of a whole new school of acting. And it was so different than what had been done before that it was revolutionary at the time. Mm-hmm. And and that's. You know, and he was one of the first, and I think that's why he became this like hoo ha. But honestly, um, I am not like this huge Brando fan. I think he had some great performances, but um, I also think he was incredibly self indulgent. Oh yeah, I mean everything he did yeah. was, was like that. Yeah, this it had forty nine more minutes. The um the re-edited one. Yeah, he put Have you put ever seen the movie the about the making of, of it? No, I didn't it's know. It's called Heart of Darkness. Yeah, it's supposed well, to be very good. I, I it's supposed to be amazing. You know what's interesting? When I'm watching it, there's a scene, you know, when they're sitting down, they're having dinner with the French uh, people, and mm-hmm. they're talking about how, like, this is their land. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be, like, the afternoon. Mm. From the beginning of the, the, the scene to the end, it becomes nighttime. Okay. It gets totally dark by the end. 
And I wonder if it was like that for the original, because this is probably scenes that they kept on. But it it was like it was supposed to be like an hour that became a day. So it oh. goes from light all the way. I mean, it goes from like afternoon light mm-hmm. to like seven o'clock hmm. in a matter of like 20 minutes. It was it was so interesting to see the light and you see the scenery change like he's saying something and he has a regular, you know, the mm-hmm. lights on him. And then it, two seconds later, the camera's on him again and it's dark and then it goes back to him and it's light again. Oh, so it was multiple takes. So you could yeah. see yeah. the, uh, the problem. With it. Yeah. yeah. See, they can balance the light in those things now. Yeah. yeah. Which, but I'll tell you the, the way this movie was done, it, it's extremely uh, revolutionary for its time. It was, yes, it definitely Absolutely. was. Absolutely, it was. Yeah. He was like he was a genius, but he, like he just took so much. You know, Coppola like took so much time and t- so much money to do things that he was. Uh, we just saw a preview for a movie that he just like his most recent movie called Tetro. Yeah, That's how what, was it? Um, no, I just saw the preview. Oh, yeah, it looks preview. very interesting. Preview. Because um, what we saw, um, we saw, what did we see? We at, the, s- at the movies, we saw The Fighter. The Fighter. The Fighter is really Excellent. good. Okay. With it, um, uh, Batman. Yes. Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale is who's insanely good in it. He is brilliant. I don't Just, even like him. Yeah. And he's I don't insanely he's, but good. he's brilliant in this movie. He and, really and is. And the one that plays Mark Wahlberg's mother, Melissa Leo. Oh, my God. She, she's, she better win the Was Oscar. Mark Wahlberg playing a cop again? No. no. Mark Wahlberg. No, he's the gives, fighter. He's the fighter. And I got to tell you, he's he gives one good. of the most understated performances he's of excellent. Mark Wahlberg. I think, he's, I think he's an extremely underrated actor. I do, too. I oh, think yeah. he's, he's a great actor. He, He's and a, you know what? <laughs> he makes enough, everyone's he performance his, in this movie. He interestingly enough, you know, he started his career as you know Marky uh, Mark, Marky Mark, and the Funky Bunch, and he was like such a, a, an untalented singer. Yeah. But he's a really good actor. He really is. He's very good in this movie. The whole the whole cast is wonderful, and it's a re- and I hate boxing as much as I hate football, but it's not about the boxing you know it's about the relationship mm-hmm. between these brothers and and their mother um and it's just wonderful I mean, it's, it's really a, yeah really, it's really so wonderful. good if you have a chance to see you really really really, really, it. really it's should. a really good movie what else did you say and then we rented to yesterday we saw um winter's something bone. called the winter's bone okay i've never uh, heard of it it's yeah, really small low budget s- film very stark not very happy no <laughs> um no and what's the girl's name hon Jennifer Lawrence. Um, this girl young, should get nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, she's been nominated for a SAG award. Um, she's a young girl. She was. I mean, she's playing a seventeen-year-old, but I think she was about twenty-one or twenty-two when she did it. But she looks young. Um, and it's a. It's about a girl who um, lives in the Ozarks, and. Um, Basically, it's in in a way, it's a slice of life, a slice of life of, of that community, that mm-hmm. culture, and that society. She is taking care of her family because her mom is just gone over the edge. She's nuts. Her, her mother is nuts. Yeah, basically, and her mother dad is, like is taken off because the police want him. And okay. she's got a younger brother and sister, and she's basically taking care of them. And and dad's not sending any money. Mom doesn't earn any. The, cru- the, 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 the crux of the movie is dad is... Um, has a court date. Has a court date, and if he doesn't show up, he put up the house, uh, their house as bail. And if he doesn't show up, they lose basically the they're going to get thrown yeah. out. So he doesn't show up, and she has to find him. And she goes about looking for him, but it it, it goes into this um, this deck. Well, generations old feud between various factions of the family, and they all make money now by making crank. Yeah, and wow, well, um, and which is really big in like real, real rural rural areas. Yeah, just in the same way that she used to put stills. Now people are cooking crank. Yes, they're cooking crank. And what is what's crank? It, it's um, it can't, crank's like a crack derivative. Yeah, you can make more of, of it. it. You know, you take a little crack and you can make a lot of crank. And there are like two families that kind of run the business or whatever. Of the crank, and they hate each other. Mm-hmm. And she has to go, like nose around to the other family i mean it's it's this very interesting very dark um 
piece of this society that we kind of don't really know very much about. And it has that feel of a movie that, you know, if you ever watch a movie when you feel like you're, you're, um, you're peeking in yeah. on something that you shouldn't see. It's mm-hmm. it's yeah, really that's what that's it's, wow, that's, that's what it's really like. really well done, and the the girl is wonderful. It's a tough watch, but it's it but but it's really I think worth it. And um and then we saw the Social Network, which is we also, hadn't seen it. Did, oh, you hadn't seen it. What no. did you think? Very interesting film. I had a little problem following some stuff. We had we we had a screener sent to us. Did you? Yeah, yeah, and we sent we had to send it back, but we had a screener sent, and it was it was good. Did you like it? I I, I listen. I thought it was a very good movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the greatest movie of all time, like people are making it out to be. I agree. I th- I've seen. Tons. I think it's a really interesting story. I think that's what's. I about think it. it's a really interesting story, especially considering that these people were. St- it only I happened think like he is good. Eight years ago, what's his name? Jake <laughs> these Eisen- people are still Jake alive. Eisenberg. Yeah. I think Jake Eisenberg is really good. I think Justin Timberlake's pretty good in it I, too. I thought Justin Timberlake's uh, perception of. Uh, the guy Sean, the mm-hmm. guy who created Napster, was dead on. The guy's yeah. an arrogant, arrogant guy. That's what and, I've heard. And he played, he played it great. I thought yeah. he he stole the, the film. I thought he did a better job than, than the main. But Justin I think, well, but I think he, he had, was supposed to. He had a flashy yeah. role. Yeah. Whereas uh, Jesse Eisenberg's role, it, he's an un, he really is an awkward, um, kind of antisocial person. You know, he he doesn't know how to socialize. That's half his problem. That's I think how it's he ends and, up and the great irony is that he creates this great social, social network, network, and he's so isolated. And but, the, and the main complaint about all social networks is we seem close, but we're not. Someone was yeah. grading. Someone, uh, one of the people we were riding up to the party with, made the excellent point: is that we know lots of information about each other, but we don't know each other. Right. That that's what's happened. I I thought it was a good movie. I, I again I don't I did not find it to be this wow. No, I agree. I, I thought, thought it was, was a compelling story, not a great movie. I yeah, thought it the was story compa- was good. The movie wasn't that. Great. I thought yeah. it was a compelling Absolutely story. Right. I think it w- I think it was a well made movie. I think the writing was you know it's it's the one thing that I love about it that I loved about it was that it was a movie about words. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, because the words were so important and. It, 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 the script of that usually um when yeah you the get words a, were very important in that when movie you get a, they when could have ruined the movie right yeah when you get a movie script the general rule is one minute of film per page i gotta think that the density of words that each page of that script was like two minutes yeah it had to have been yeah i mean because they're and, speaking and i liked you know that it's an intelligent movie and it's about something and it makes you think um and it makes you ask questions about our society and how it's changed irrevocably really well, yeah there's this i mean facebook turned i mean it, it's like the telephone now you yeah. know I th- yeah it, i mean it, it really ha- it, it's, it's it's the major communication now and it's a, you know what's weird is we have returned to a written form of communication we you know we went to audio and now you know people text more than they phone now yeah it's a, isn't that amazing, huh? Yeah, it's and, it's, and that's ADD communication. But can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine if text messaging came out first? I mean, technically it did to mm-hmm. write. Right, it was first. But I mean, you would be here. So there's this thing. You don't need right. to type anymore. You could just hit a button and hear them. Right, right. Like it's called a phone. Oh my god, a phone. Yeah, right? I know. It's kind of weird. It, it is. If you think well, I think it's a, all about privacy now because people text. When they can't talk. To, right. You know, right. they you text can, because I'm in the office and I really can't be heard talking on the car. So I'll surreptitiously, right. you know, text you a message. Yeah. Right. I or think, I can sit in the movies and I can text. Yeah, I guess. You I know? guess that's what does it. I want to remind everybody, I'm uh, I'm going to be doing a internet radio show after this uh, goes on the air. I believe, it's a little bit later. It's at 930. I'll be calling into, calling into Lunatic Radio. Mm. I'm sure they're going to tell me I suck. Sounds perfect for you. Sounds perfect. <laughs> they, and, and I don't think they know how out of my mind I am. So I'll be around here and I'll be hanging out and I'll be doing this. Um, next week, the um, the Academy. Well, actually, tomorrow, the Academy Award mm-hmm. nominations will come out. So I think we're going to we're going to talk about. Uh, oh, excellent. we'll talk about all of those and all the movie stuff we wanted to. Did talk you about. see Black Swan yet? Yes. yes. What did you think? Did we talk about it last week? I think we did. It re- really looks interesting. Again, I think it's a not great movie. Oh, okay. 
filmed yeah. well. Okay. And mm-hmm. I don't think it's the greatest story. You know, uh, to me, it, it 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 goes between reality and 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 her delusion, and it never commits to either one of them. Like um, what we were talking about, what movie was completely a delusion? And we were like, oh, Beautiful Mind. You just gave away piece of the movie. Oh no, but none of my viewers are gonna go see it. Yeah. They'll probably just download that that makeout scene between Mila Kunis and, and <laughs> Natalie Portman. That's about it. Um, in a beautiful mind, if you saw that, yeah, you really don't know. I mean, unless somebody told you or you've heard it, you really don't know until well into the movie that these are all illusions and delusions in his mind. Yeah, like they do it so well that. I, I mean, I know I was surprised. Wasn't the same thing with Fight Club? Wasn't that the whole premise too? The guy was nutty. The Brad, the Brad Pitt character was he like his his alter ego. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. That's another movie, and and I'm gonna get a lot of crap for this. People think Fight Club is one of the greatest movies ever. I, I have seen it 15 times. I mean, I'm, I'm my understanding number out there. is the book. A ton. Are, mm-hmm. My understanding, the book is amazing. Is it? I don't get it. I don't get what's so brilliant about this movie. I just think that people dig the whole idea of, of there being something called Fight Club. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I just I just didn't get it. I've been watching a lot of older movies lately. Like well, I hadn't seen Apocalypse Now in years, and I didn't remember a thing. And what I do you sa- consider older movies? Anything? <laughs> yeah, well, Andrew, that's perspective. Yeah, you have to ninety. Yeah. Okay, fine. Ninety two <laughs> and and on. That's an older movie. Ninety two and back. Yeah, that's older. Ninety two. That's and back. older. Yeah. No, well, no, like, like, okay, yeah, but it it would be. Would you? Goodfellas is an older movie now. It's not a newer film. No, it's not. It's an older no, movie. No, no. no. One no. of the things that the, one movie. of one of our delusions is is that there are rock and roll songs that we love, and they, yeah. they just came out. Oh my god, twenty years ago. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the, I mean, the, the songs from the eighties now are, are now thirty years old. You know. That is I want to. So I want to make a list for the show of like movies that I don't get. Like I, oh, I should never talk about that. I never got the James Bond thing. Never liked James Bond. Really? Never got him. I just don't understand why somebody just doesn't shoot him in the head <laughs> and end this madness. Seriously? Yeah. Never got him. Don't well, get you know James what? Bond. If you don't get it, you don't get it. James I Bond. Because you either buy it all. I mean, aren't or you buy they just a male fantasy? I don't like. I I don't like the the new James Bond. Oh, okay. I don't like him at all. I uh, Pierce Bronze. What, no, what was what was his name? Uh, the Pierce one Brosnan? right. Well, who Pierce Brosnan before him was, was Timothy before, Dalton. Yeah, no. Oh no, Daniel Craig now. Daniel yeah, Craig. Daniel yeah. Craig. The, this guy now, Daniel Craig, he's not convincing. I actually. He haven't. looks like he, well, he reminds me of tra- Vladimir Putin for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> what they, what they try to do is they keep trying to make Bond. Ever since they change, every time they change the person who plays Bond, they try to make it more realistic. Yeah. And the last thing in the world that James that Bond it should did be is, is realistic. realistic. Yeah. I mean, That's why I go back and watch the Sean Connery ones. It's so oh completely. God, it so you good. have to. You have to go. Okay. Yeah, it's I a fantasy. Which one was the one where they were in New York in Harlem? Oh God, it was. It was bad. It wasn't good. That must be one of the new ones. Because no, I it was the it. older one. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, but, but it wasn't Sean Connery. I don't. No, it wasn't Connery. No. It was he. It was what. Was it, it was Roger one after, Moore. It was Roger Moore. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the Roger and it was not convincing. The Roger Moore ones are kind of tongue in cheek. The Roger Moore ones are the, are almost comic. Yeah, they are. They're kind of. They're very tongue in cheek. The Sean Connery ones are more serious. Uh, which one was it? No, uh, not tomorrow. Which one was it? I'm trying to find out now. The, it, it took place in Harlem. I really live and let die. There you go. Oh, well, That's Live and Let Die ended up in, in the bayou, too. James but but the people say Live and Let Die is a good Bond movie. I didn't find it to be a good Bond movie I don't at think all. it's one of the better. I, I honestly... It's got a cool car jump. What I found better. amazing was they shot in Harlem, and that's what Harlem really looked like. Yeah. Yes. Like, I really thought <laughs> it was... True. I thought when... I honestly thought when they were doing it, it was like communist, like, Germany. In, yeah. the, in like the late 70s. But that is what it was like. Like I thought this was like Berlin. Um, Trust me, I was around. <laughs> yeah. That's what My it was God. like. My it, God. It, yeah. was, it was like it, the world yeah, had this, ended. This, well, is, the this thing is, that is makes back me when they called, Fort, they called the South Bronx Fort Apache. There yeah. was it looked a, like Berlin a, after the there's war. There's a movie from the 70s with uh, Paul, Paul Newman. Newman. And it's called Fort Apache. It's about the... 
police department. Because basically the police all went into the barracks and stayed there. Yeah, it was you know? about the police department up in the South Bronx. That's how bad it was. Like one of the later Bond movies, uh, he, you know, the, the MIA uh, takes away his license and they're actually looking for him to capture him and arrest him. He becomes a fugitive. This is your top, you know, like would be the top CIA mm-hmm. operative, right? The, the MIA. You think he's gone AWOL? Like, and it's in every movie. It's like, Bond, hand in your, your resignation and your gun. And he's going to say, okay, you're right. Here you go. I'm going home. <laughs> like, it's so, it was so dumb. I, I don't know. He's not convincing. Here, he, he, there's no charm with him. Daniel Craig? Yeah, there's I, no charm. I can't well, say, I, think I, that's, I think that's his character choice. I think he's a bitter, bitter old man. You know, that's the, how he's playing Bond. Who, the, really? You think so? Oh, yeah. I think it's I think it's the character. He's not choice. that old, though. No. No, no, no. I'm just... I'm. But that's what he's... Pl- I, I, but you know what I mean? Like, Pierce thought, Bronson was, was, I was a Pierce better... I thought Pierce Brosnan was Brosnan a was a better Bond. Because yeah. he had that... Suave yeah. and that charm, and you and he was really handsome, and you kind of be, not believe, but you went with the fantasy. That is Bond, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, I want to make that list of movies I don't get because I'm should. sure there's a ton that are like that oh, that people swear that that are great and like I never got Sherlock Holmes in general. There was never anything appealing about Sherlock Holmes. Um, I think he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sherlock Holmes is and stupid. Einstein. What a moron! Yeah. You have you what Sherlock Holmes have you watched? I've read it and oh, I just I was bored with it. But that's not a movie. Okay, you might hate me. Okay. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, one of the worst things I've ever seen on Broadway. We're with you. We hate it. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! I thought it. you would hate me. I thought it was. I no, think it's the it. worst. I don't know how it was. It's been on either. for so many years. I don't I know don't who either. went to go see okay. this. Okay. I'm never going to get hired in a musical ever I, in my I, life. People, Here we go. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Overrated. Not. Totally. Oh, not. No. He writes brilliant songs, right? And then repeats them six hundred times, times within the same musical. Yeah. There was one thing called Aspect of Love, and there was a lick in that show. Love, that love, love conquers, conquers everything. Every two minutes, it was like, <laughs> oh, shut up. the same lick. <laughs> but I, yeah, I do not get Phantom. I, I really don't. I think there are one or two good, nice songs, and that's about it. I, I don't Now, get Cats, it. that's something to go say. No. Another I Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Another, I know, I know. It's a book. One of, great it, song. He wrote a musical with a storyline based cats. on a book of poetry that had no... Um, through line. Yeah, and he wh- created a through line. One, for it. I mean, it had one great song, and it, it, people. I think you know the whole concept of the dancers being dressed as cats and, and the giant junkyard the audience and the giant junkyard and stuff. People sort of thought it was brilliant, but do you know what the uh, number one play of all time is on Broadway? Longest running play? Uh, Bro- no, no. Yeah, all time longest running. Longest running is it was. Uh, on Broadway? Yeah. Wait a minute. What it was the one that... Cl- um, what closed? Number of performances, 17,162. Was it Greece? No, it closed in 2002. Oh. Um, wait, oh. was it Phantom? It was off-Broadway. Oh, off-Broadway. Oh, at, the- at the Sullivan Playhouse. Oh, yes. The um, Fantastic. The, fan- yeah. the Fantastic. Number... Yeah, but that, that's the longest running ever to- of all time. That's the longest Broadway, running play. Actually, yeah. actually, that's the longest running play in this country. In, in this country. Yeah. The longest running play in the world is in England. The Mousetrap Trap. has been running since like 1954. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, Phantom, a, is, Phantom is still running. They, they, they've been going the longest. And in Cats, Les Mis, A Chorus Line... Um, I'm just trying to see what else. In the yeah, with the minute the minute um, Phantom of the Opera passed um, Les Mis, I got depressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, Les Mis stopped, and then it came back. Yeah. And my understanding is it's supposed to come back again. I love Les Mis. I, w- I would go see that again. Yeah, I love Les Mis. I yep. really do. So do I. Miss Saigon. I liked Miss Saigon. I, liked I didn't too. care for it as much as yeah. she did. I sobbed through the entire. It's second written act. by the same people that wrote uh, Les Mis, you know. T- through yeah. the entire. As you could tell. To the entire second act, once. The end of the first act when she sings to the to the kid and you know <laughs> I you know I give my life someone in, for some, you. Someone you in the room know. just wrote you Broadway know. shows. Could they pick a topic I know less about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll we'll go back to movies. Um, so we'll do rent. The, by the way, 
Never liked it. Never Me got neither. it. Don't understand. Thank Re- okay. You. When I, I was in, was when a I was in, thing. when I, I do not it is get a, it. I think it is when I was in eighth or ninth grade. I everybody can't tell. Everybody was like, everybody in love was with about rent. rent, and they would they knew the songs, and everybody loved it. I do not get it. Isn't it about like homeless people and prostitutes? You know what it is. It's right? La it's Boheme, a, it's basically. Th- it's a retelling of the the opera La Boheme. Yeah, it's a modern retelling of the. So what the we'll opera do La next Boheme. week? Uh, we'll write down the things that we don't get, like movies, because we do things we don't get, but we never done movies that we I, didn't we get. Have loads. Or series as we have loads. We have loads, and we'll talk about the the um, the Oscar. Picks we'll talk about the Oscar picks yeah. at the same time. I'd like to take a last uh, last few minutes because there's um, something that's I don't know. I, I think because of Facebook. I've become really aware of it and, and all the people that are in my in my life. And uh, I, I, I don't even know to say that this is a cause now. It's just an awareness that I have. I have a friend in um, Connecticut who has a daughter with Asperger's. We have a cousin whose son has Asperger's. Uh, I found out that one of my best friends from college has a kid with autism. And it just seems that everyone that I talk to Every parent that we know who has a, who has kids born like in the 90s, at least one of their kids has some sort of learning disability, ADD, ADHD, Asperger's, autism. And it's scaring me it's that there's ra- this it, it is entire so generation of kids that we're losing to this. Now, the Alzheimer's is uh, Alzheimer's. Excuse me. My other cause. Um, autism is now something that strikes one in a hundred and it's now it, it dropped below 120 kids now. Do you think we're more aware now rather than labeling a well, child certainly there's stupid those or, or, or being, cl- I mean, a I, lot of people hit it. Uh, autism has always existed yeah. on some form, form or another. But now and we even, have a label. Even in, yeah. in the autis, uh, autistic spectrum. Um, if you go on to my Facebook page, people, and go back a few days, is about a week ago, honey, that I that I found that that someone forwarded me that there's a, a, a if you ever wanted to understand autism go listen to a speech it's on something called TED T-E-D mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a um, it's a short lecture by Tem- yeah the TED talk by Temple by Temple Grandin mm-hmm. do you know have you heard of Temple Grandin they did a an H uh, not HBO excuse me a cable movie about her uh, Claire Danes I played think it her was yeah HBO. yeah uh, it might have been HBO I'm sorry I just didn't want to misassign it autism um, is is a continuum is that what you're talking about because it's it's um yes is it temple grandin talking? yeah yeah yeah, yeah it would definitely is it definitely is can you I give mean, that address Scott? yeah it's autism today blog.com they have it there I'll, I'll post i'll post in the chat room um it's just insanely insanely informative um and she talks about how she's a visual thinker and most of us are literal thinkers that you know word word oriented thinkers and then she said, you know, you take someone like Einstein, you take someone like um, Michelangelo, these people could have very much appeared in the, the autism spectrum because particularly the kids who have Asperger's, very often they're geniuses. Yeah. They're so smart. Yeah. But they think differently than you and I do. Okay. So in a sense, th- there's a there's a there's a byproduct of genius that falls mm-hmm. in there so it's like um i used to when i used to teach you know i used to show a picture of the elephant man you know yeah all hunched over and michael jordan and said these people are both freaks you know yeah. one is an acceptable freak and one is an unacceptable one, yeah. freak okay so they are beginning to see more and more th- there that there is a portion of of the population that is born that doesn't have autism and then in essence contracts it that it's there's something biochemical going on that does it much in the same way and it's all about developmental so that things that you and i do you know sipping from plastic or whatever the thing is because i'm not going to assign causes now there's been a whole debate about um um injections and that yeah, they got. Did which, you see that that was debunked? Which yeah, they, they recently they debunked it because. Well, the whole thing is, and I'm just gonna and I and I'm fine. I find also it's very interesting. I find this conversation very, very, very fascinating, and I and I constantly read up on it because mm-hmm. you know as someone that that is eventually gonna have kids, right. It, exactly. It's a scary, scary thought Extremely. to think this might. What is happen. your exposure like? Your friends? Do you have? Do you um, have? No, but you know what it is. I'm, I, I'm, I, I think I'm a little older. Than than the than 
it, you're right though. In the '90s, it seems yes. like it became. If you were that's, born in the early '90s, that's where it, or mid '90s or is. now, it seems like there's a huge influx of influx of of autism and Asperger's. It's almost like. And we I was just having this discussion with somebody. Uh, my brother has a friend, which I believe has Asperger's. Mm-hmm. His family will never accept it. Mm. Never accept it. My, I, I would. We have a family friend. The child has autism. Mild. I mean, it's it, he's functional. Right. It, it's a very mild case of autism, but it's definitely autism. Mm-hmm. The family will not accept it as they say. There's nothing wrong with my kid. The child has development problems, uh, learning disabilities, and the family will not accept it. So now it, it, you could you could look at it from both sides. A, have we become an evolved society that's more accepting of this and understands what it is, and we and and we're more. It's almost like a comfort mm-hmm. for the parents to know there's groups for this. There's more children like this, mm-hmm. and your child isn't you know alone in this. And there you could you could help it. You could there it, there's no treatment, but you could uh, help it along. You mm-hmm. could you could with with you could facilitate yeah, their life. Yeah. That, that's what uh, I'm I think the for. thing that scares me about it is I don't think I th- used to think, you know, someday they're going to find the cause of autism. And I don't think it's any one thing. No, I, I think, think it's, it's yeah. I think it's 15 things and it's 15 things that we because it's do. such a large spectrum that the term autism, it's still a very I mean, you could you could be autistic and totally function. Yes. A- the same for, you know, Asperger's is, is a form of autism. Yes. But I know that this my, this friend of mine in Connecticut works with her daughter and she is you know she is vicious about her about her steadfastness with the kids diet and yeah. that and that diet and it helps makes, yeah. it, it does. helps a great deal and her cousin has a son and they worked with him diligently they did. and the kids now you know the kids now at at Rochester at Rochester going to college you know living living in an apartment by himself but i have a question now and again, I don't think it's the immunizations that are causing this. No, I, I don't this think is my, so. Again, this is my personal. No, I don't think so. This either. is okay. from this what is, I've this, read. This friend this of mine is, in Connecticut is a scientist, and she doesn't think. It's, yeah, uh, I think this is a theory that. based on one doctor. Right. The one doctor said this, and it's almost you know when when you're a parent, you're looking for a reason. Right. You cannot say. This is something I did. This is something genetic. This is something I fed him. So you're, you know, you. It's an easy thing. Well, it's the shots, right? And again, there's, it could be. I personally don't think because of all the research that I've read. I agree. Now, what else could cause it? I think we've we've had this for a long time, and it was never diagnosed. A lot of parents were closeted about this. They were scared. They labeled the kid weird. They labeled the kid retarded. They labeled the kid stupid. Uh, troublesome. Troublesome. Uh, they gave him everything except for this. Now we have this term and we're able to determine it. I, I'm curious if, if how many of my peers You'd would have, have been labeled di- autistic. Well, it's like people with learning disabilities ADD, or, mm-hmm. or ADD dyslexia. ADD seems to be the term from my time. Every Oh, you have yeah, ADHD. ADD. You have ADD. And then 10 years before that, it was dyslexia. It was dis- right. dyslexia. dyslexia. And okay. I can, now I can't and speak. And what you're starting to do is starting to subdivide this. This is what I'm... I'm learning a great deal of this from, from a friend of mine. And the thing that's also that I didn't realize is that autism comes in four or five different forms sure, yeah. not just mild you know you can have four or five different forms in weak to yeah. to very strong you know what's scary is you said there and again i've i'm extremely fascinated by this and i, I would love to talk about this for days there was a there was a st- i was watching this documentary and it was about a girl she was three years she was like two years old or three years old and she was perfectly fine, developing perfectly fine. She got sick. Mm-hmm. She got a flu, whatever it was. And she, slowly, after getting sick, she started falling back in development. Me, it, it was almost like she was progressing. Yes, and I it have just actually, went backwards. I actually have heard of that. She went backwards. She lost speech. Yeah. She lost uh, motor skills. And it's om- it's almost like she's you know one yeah. years old again. I've actually and, heard and, that and happening. And the thing that you know you say you're concerned. I mean, having children isn't uh, a concern of ours. But you talk about having children. You know, it seems to think the things that have taken root and caused this to blossom as much as possible. I don't think it's a blossom in diagnosis. You know, um, well, no, I take that back. We are able to diagnose this better, but I also think there's an influx in the amount 
of yeah. it that's occurring. What do you? What, I mean, again, I, I would hate. To I think there are dietary things. I think there are there is tons of chemical stuff that's around us that you know we live in homes now that are sealed. You know, they they really are. You know, people used to. I mean, when was the last time you threw open the the windows of your house? Like you know, all day. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't happen. Well, and even when up. you do, the air is probably polluted. So, but uh, again, but do you, indoor do you really pollution is supposed to be, you know, ten times worse. But than but how about other countries? You also have to look at what what the autism rate is in other countries. There are countries out there with with high pollution rates, uh, and they don't have a a high rate in autism. Right. Uh, or well, or the, again or again, the, it's oh, not it's not a, a, a it ha- term that we've they've labeled. Well, I think actually in a, in a lot of those countries um, where there's high pollution rates, um, it, in some of those countries you don't have the diagnoses going yeah, on that we have right. here. So you can't tell. But, but let's talk about tell. let's talk about some place like England. You know, like London. How high is their autism rate compared to ours? How about in Canada? How high is their autism rate compared to ours? I'd like, I don't know. Let's, the stats let's yet. take like let's I said. I'm on the I'm the beginning of this path of of discovery about this. You know, and and what's weird is you know I, I well I don't know I I don't know about. England or Canada, I would suspect, uh, but uh, I mean, I certainly know that in uh, places like Italy or France, they still do not use the amount of chemicals that we use. They don't eat the kind of processed food that we do. um, And they seem to have less learning disabilities and autism in their in their countries. So. It's, it's a extremely, extremely fascinating. It is. Uh, it definitely topic is. Because there's no, th- there are multiple things that people have done and there's no one answer. They, they no. don't know if it's genetic. They don't know if it's, and there is a gene. I mean, it is partially genetic and they're able to find it, but they, people have been tested and they've seen no, uh, you know, genetic makeup on, on either side of the parents or anything in the family. So how did the right. child so, become autistic? Right. right. So then, that, that, then it's all in a, and it's an all exterior and influence. Wait a minute. Isn't Jenny McCartney's son cured? And I'm putting quotes up for not that he's cured. That he's is cured. That he, no, worked, no, no. He claimed he's, he's cured of autism. He's functioning at a much higher level. Almost normally. Yeah. I think autism is something you always have. Yeah. I don't think. You're cured, per no, se. but but she she cl- I mean, this is something she had claimed. She said she cured her son of autism. Now, how do you? I, you know, and Jenny McCartney became the face of autism. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I think and good for and, her. And here, here's something, but but I feel she's you know she she's one of the people that thinks it's the vaccinations. Yeah, I think what happened. She's a terrified parent. Sure, yeah. that has no answer, and, and she's grabbing at the at the easiest explanation possible. Right. To what could have possibly caused, uh, it. caused this? Yeah, you know, you could, you could, you could grab anything. You really can. And and as a, you know, I would, I would, and I, I'm not going to criticize her because I don't feel, you know, her believing that. Uh, I think as a parent, you'll do, you'll believe whatever you can, whatever you know, you'll come up with crazy theories because it's your kid, and right. now your kid has autism. You, there's something wrong with your kid. Right. What do you do? Yeah. Th- okay. This is the this and is she something she certainly a- is committed to yeah. her child. Yeah. So. The, the, and the, and there you have a double edged problem with the internet, w- where this is concerned, because there's a lot of information available to people who used to not be able to get it, but there's also a ton of information that's wrong. Right. That and that's the problem. Yeah. Because that, that's people the problem. people are selling cures yeah you know and and well you know you're not getting the kids and this is the problem you're not the kids aren't getting shots but now guess what meningitis is coming back that's right there 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 a lot of people (laughs) attribute it to the mmr shot which is uh measles mumps and rubella Mm -hmm. all these things are starting to come back because if you look at it, a lot of kids come from out of con- out of the country. That's right. And if you're in some place like New York City, yes, they haven't been immune. Immu- no, they haven't had their immun- immunization. Now your kid is playing with them. That's and right. And guess what? Your kid could possibly get these diseases. That's that right. Your kid and these are not. It, you're not talking about the flu. Wait, we forget no. what it was like 50, 60, 70 years ago oh, when yeah. people, children were dying of this. Or so becoming now, and, and or what becoming, I fear, you know, uh, crippled. Yeah. Or what they, I fear, a lot of these, a lot of these. Uh, illnesses that were pretty much eradicated yeah in the 20th century starting, are going to start coming are going to start they to come are back. they're starting to crop up in schools and stuff now because uh, simply because of that we have so many immigrants and they're coming from countries as you said where they're not immunized and then if we don't immunize our kids yeah. we're exposing them to 
horrible illnesses that you're right. People have forgotten yeah. how bad they were. Yeah. So it's something to think about. Yeah. Um, I was also told uh, that one of the reasons for the gigantic influx of homeschooling in this country, uh, a lot of people thought it was a lot of um, you know religious moral uh, questions. A great deal of the movement is because those people are not getting their child immunized and you can't go to public school without that's that is interesting yeah yeah it's uh, that is it, it's 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 a again as you said a double-edged sword and um you know hopefully in, it's a in, double-edged we'll sword figure out what you know in, in the next 10 15 years we'll at least have the, some sort i think of the idea. difficulty in finding the cause is is that the cause is not one thing it's not yeah and that's, nor, that's exactly nor is, nor is right. the co- nor is the cause easily remedied particularly if it's multi-leveled so you know, you know what I love about this country is that they, they they roll up their sleeves and everything. But a lot of times, what what Americans really love is a nice, easy solution. Do this, and everything will be better. You yeah. know, and there's not one thing we're going to have to do yeah. here. We're going to have to do like ten or twenty things. To, yeah, to I mean, fix I mean, to close. Because and we can also, talk about this for we're days. going to have to take care of the people that have it. Even if we fix the solution, it's like a lot of diseases. We are coming on the crest of taking care of a lot of things. But the people that are left, this is true of Alzheimer's, you know, you know, if we found a solution for it tomorrow, no one would ever get it again. But there would be millions of people who still have it. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's going to be true in this case as well. And we've got to integrate these people into this society. And the Temple Grandin thing really made me think that if we worked with these people, though, those people have so much to offer. Like I said, there is a kind of genius that happens in here. It's, it's one part of the brain that can't function is now being made up for by a part of the brain that doesn't function as well in you and I and creates things that you and I could never create or think of. On that note, let's wrap it up. Go to our website, guysfromqueens.com, and we'll see you all next week. Good night, everyone. Good night, Bye. everyone.